Hello everybody, and welcome to the Outline Gaming Podcast. I hope you all can hear me. We can hear you loud and clear. Welcome everyone to the Outline Gaming Podcast. We have also have here Thornberry. Welcome. Hello. Uh, gamer also. <laughs> so welcome both to the Outline Gaming Podcast. So, I've got this set up. What is it? Welcome. I don't think that worked. <laughs> I've got, I've got like, a load, I've got a load of hotkeys. So let's, let's just stick that picture up. So can everybody hear us clearly? 
That galactic says loud uh, and clear. Nice one. Hello, galactic. Um, sorry, people, but I won't be able to give mods out because I, oh well, actually, I might be able to. Because all my keyboard and my PC is all set up with hotkeys, so if I press any one, it just it's just gonna come up with a video. So yeah, <laughs> we're gonna. Yes, yeah, sir. So today we'll be talking about Resident Evil, and we're gonna go straight. Um, we're gonna just roll off chat. So, let's. Uh, would you like to kick anything off, Bearded? I just want to say I remember when I played this game back in the what was it, nineteen ninety two, the Aladdin one. <laughs> I love throwing apples to the uh, Jafar Hansman. I don't know what, what their name was. This is what long time ago yeah. but it was fun as hell uh, and using the carpet to escape the uh, cave and everything that was awesome that's yeah. all i can say I, yeah i put that aladdin one up because aladdin is made by the same guy who created the resident evil series oh there you go Hadouken. that's new i, I was I not aware <laughs> i did not know that yeah oh yeah God, yeah yeah so yeah Cindy mccammy who helped create and develop resident evil created the game for aladdin See, there was some wickedness uh, playing Aladdin. The the uh, apples were full of uh, T virus. That's what's yeah. going on. He eh? yeah. brought it from the, all the way from the Middle East to Raccoon City. So, <laughs> let's get um. Let's ask how, how everybody is in chat first. How, how is everybody in chat? Welcome to today's posca podcast. Please forgive me as this is my first time trying to do a podcast. <laughs> You're doing very well, buddy. I have no idea what I'm doing, <laughs> but thank you. It's all thank good. You, buddy. good. So, yeah, we're talking about Resident Evil. So, when did you first play Resident Evil Bearded and um, Thornberry? Um, Thornberry, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're all right. I think I was like 12. When... I don't think it was when the first one first came out. I think that came out when I was younger, but... When my stepdad first moved in with us was when we first got a PlayStation. So that was one of the first games I played on the PlayStation, and it scared the crap out of me. Uh, <laughs> the trailer. Let me just get the trailer up. I'll wow, need to turn the sound down, so... What about you, Bearded? So yeah, this is the trailer that we're all talking about. As this is what made it so fun. Oh, hold on, I don't, I don't see the trailer. It might be my end. Can you, can you see it? Uh, I, I, I can't see it either. Maybe there's some a bit of lag on YouTube. Yeah, here it is. There you go. Yeah, it's just a little bit delay in YouTube. <laughs> yeah, because we're... July 1998, Raccoon Suit. It's because we're talking through Discord. <laughs> we have, like, a delay to work. <laughs> we have the Alpha and Bravo. Stars members going to the Arkan Mountains. I feel like I'm there. Yeah, so this is the trailer that started it all. It was all made with um, real actors. It's what made the series popular. And it's heavily based on a lot of B movie horrors. Nobody was in it. But strangely, most of the equipment was still there. However, we soon discovered why. So yeah, I haven't even shared this out yet. I'll have to share out. <laughs> no, I remember the. I remember this trailer. Uh, and I. That's when the when the dogs started attacking, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Look uh, at that. Oh, it's very dark, but the guy has sunglasses and everything, it's fine, you know? Maybe he has some, you know, some issues. Wes always wears sunglasses. <laughs> Nobody never asked him, hey, you know, it's pitch black, and why in the hell do you have glasses? We don't care. Uh, the reason, very normal. The reason why it's black and white <laughs> is because it was filmed in colour, but if they didn't make it black and white, they would have banned it. What? Really? Yeah, there's, was, only, there's only one country. There's I only suppose. one country where it has the color. No! Wow, so look at the guy. He just picks up the gun right out the barrel instead of picking it from the other side. You know where where the trigger is. No, he's like taking it all the way. That's very dangerous. That guy probably lost an arm. Not because of the dog, <laughs> just because of the gun. <laughs> the acting is amazing. 
This is black and white just because it was filmed back in the 1940s. Don't believe anything the bankers say. <laughs> Probably. There's no sound either. No, no, go. Everybody, Charlie Chaplin here. This is all voice acting, you know. Silent movies. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Let me turn. So, yeah, that was the trailer for Resident Evil. That was released on PS1 in 1996. Yes. That so that was, the I... first, that was the first experience that a lot of us had playing a zombie game. And that yeah. made it so popular. I actually started playing this game right after playing set the second one because the second one came out in 1998 if i'm not mistaken um and i remember i was probably like at around second grade or third grade and i have a couple of friends in my school that were like oh, have you played resident evil i'm like oh i don't know what that is and i went to a pool party and they were playing a game and i was like oh oh my god this is resident evil i got hooked to it i was not expecting mr Ed following me later on or the liquors uh i actually found that later when i bought the game i was playing by myself uh, in the middle of the night, and um, yeah, that was actually my first experience playing Resident Evil. Then I played the first one, which was actually more scary than the second one, my, in my opinion, of course. Well, um, my experience was um, I snuck downstairs to go watch an horror movie called Dawn of the Dead, done by the master, George A. Romero. <laughs> George Romero. And it's like, yeah, watching that, and then a few days later, my older brother, like, oh, I've got this game, and it's like, I, I get to kill zombies. It's like, Hell yeah, I'm going to kill some zombies. <laughs> and then, yeah, I was hooked on the series. So. Ooh, that was the sound of the zombies made. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. Ooh. And, <laughs> and this iconic scene right here. Oh, Resident Evil 2. <laughs> Resident Evil oh, yeah. 2. Yeah. Clear! Cherry! Yeah, this was a majestic. For me, this was this has been one of the best video games out there for PS One. Uh, obviously, the remake we will talk about it later on. It yeah. Came out what 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Well, Another well, masterpiece. Well, um, Resident Evil Two remake. Um, yes, that was 2019. 2019. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, there it is. Oh. So, does, I do, <laughs> does anybody have any questions in chat concerning Resident Evil that we can? We welcome any them. opinions. This is an open chat, guys. Yeah. If you have any questions, anything that you remember for the first time you played Resident Evil games, please let us know. We'd like to know your opinion, of course. And your experience. So you're playing you're currently playing which Resident Evils are you currently streaming? Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> I know we had this conversation a couple of days ago, so I'm basically playing all of them, but I'm all over the place. Like, I started with Resident Evil 2, with Leon Starry, then I went to Claire, then I went all the way to 4, then I went all the way to 7, then I went back all the way to 4, and then I started the first one. So I'm all over the place, but basically I'm playing all of them. Um, I still have to finish Resident Evil 3. Um, still doing the live streams. I have to finish Resident Evil 4, the live stream as well, and 7. And oh, before I forget, I'm doing five as well, and um, yeah, and sits and sits as well. That's coming, but uh, I'm all over the place. They're actually not in order. I feel like I'm watching like a Star Wars movie. You know, like Episode Four came out first, and then five, <laughs> six. then you went all the way to one, two, three, and then you jump all the way to seven, eight, and nine. And then so, you do a yeah. remake. To, and and there's gonna be a remake. Yes. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> I'm all over the place on it. Oh, the How about you guys? Um... <laughs> I still need to finish Code Veronica because I started that stream weeks ago and then um, I haven't come, um, continued it yet. <laughs> so. Yeah, Code Veronica, it's actually, in my opinion, felt more of a continuation um, for Resident Evil 2 than Resident Evil 3 uh, Nemesis. Well, um, I'm just going to jump to Galactic and then I'll answer that question for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, Galactic, um, yeah, the original ones were quite good. If you have a PS3 red, um, at your own or if you have managed to get find a cheap PlayStation 3, you can play the originals on the PS3, either by disc or digital. So you, you should check out the original games. Yeah, um, but you did. It's, um, with Code Veronica feeling more like a proper sequel to number two is because Resident Evil 3 and Code Veronica was developed at the same time as sister developments, and Code Veronica was supposed to be the actual remake, and Resident Evil 3 was supposed to be the spin-off. Gotcha, okay. So, so I guess Cap Capcom just did a, a little, no, I'm not going to say that it was, excuse me, uh, a mistake. It was just like they just released something 
uh, that was actually not number three. Like Resident Evil Three was actually not number three. I mean, it, it ended up being number three, but actually, Code Veronica. Let's say from a, a canon perspective, Code Veronica was actually the continuation of two, not Resident Evil Three. So, in other words, Nemesis should have been the spinoff and not uh, Code Veronica. Yes. Yeah, so I guess because the third one sort of carries on with Jill's story, doesn't it? But Code Veronica carries on with Claire's story. So yes. It's a bit like... <laughs> yeah, and yeah, as I was saying, um, yeah. Um... Yeah, because it was called Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, yeah, that was supposed to be the spin-off, so that was, yeah. Code Veronica, I think, is fast superior, then number three, for some reason. Yeah, I remember playing Code Veronica. It wasn't for PS. I, I think I actually played it for Sega Dreamcast. Oh. And uh, it, it, I think it was my first game that I bought, uh, apart from Sonic Adventures. Those two games were my first uh, video games that I had for Sega Dreamcast. Hello, Goku. I'm pretty good. How are you? How is everybody in chat? Sorry for ignoring you. Um, we had a trail and then we just started talking about Resident Evil. How was your weekend? Yeah, so yeah. Um, I've asked you, Beaded, what was your plans with Resident Evil? Do you have any plans for Resident Evil Thornberry? Uh, well, me and my sister were thinking of doing Resident Evil 6 at some point, maybe. Ah, nice. We have been playing 5, but we haven't been streaming it, so I don't know. We'd probably have to start from the beginning getting other one to stream it, I suppose, because we're quite near the end now already. Um, well, you can you can still restart it and um, stream it from the beginning. Um, have you got number five? You could start off with number five. Yeah, we've, well, I've got all of them, but I think it's just five and six that are two-player now. Ah, welcome, It's a Killer. How are you? Um, I was going to say, what are your thoughts on number five? Because the fifth installment in the main series was quite controversial bearded and thornberry uh i think it was i i mean in my perspective it's just uh it didn't in, once again this is my opinion i didn't feel like it was a resident evil game i think the uh actual uh survival horror even though you're surviving and shooting uh in this case it's the uh i'm not even called in zombies anymore they're just a mutation from a, a parasite called las plagas so mm. it didn't feel any more of Resident Evil game. Do you have Chris destroying boulders with a fist? So it's like, come on, dude, really? <laughs> what happened to the mansion? What happened to the Raccoon City Police yeah. Department? Now you go all the way like Superman and G.I. Joe. No, oh, come on. So I think that after Resident Evil 4, I was like, okay, this is not my typical Resident Evil game. And I still approve it. With 5, I was like, yeah, you know what? Forget it. I think Capcom dropped the ball and I got, and I'm sure they got a lot of, uh, negative reviews even though it's, it was an entertaining game don't get me wrong it's just like it didn't feel like a resident evil game anymore um this yeah. is this is gonna probably cause shock within the chat is that i think the downfall of resident evil going into what action started with resident evil 4. Because even though everybody loves that game that is where it went into more third person action than a survival horror action correct that's that's what i was trying to where i was trying to go with the resident evil franchise and uh, when Resident Evil 7 came out, uh, I'm jumping sets, just just hear me out. So when, when 7 came out, I was actually thinking that it was going to be like a third person, like you, the camera was going to be behind Ethan, and I was not going to be first person. That, that was actually um, revolutionary for a Resident Evil game. Um, but in my opinion, yeah, 4 and 5 just destroyed uh, the franchise, my opinion, once again. Um, yeah, um, I thought they were setting up because they released that like playable trailer, the same with Silent Hills called P.T., and I thought they was using the same setup as that, using first person. And then once the game was released, it either go into third person, you know, like Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 3 Remake. Mm. Yeah, that's 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 what I thought. But with this, with 5, uh, once again, it was just like more of the same with Resident Evil 4. And I think uh, Capcom uh, noticed that after 5, they, they needed to change... Um, their game plan. They couldn't release Resident Evil 6 the same way they did with 5, and they tried to change it. You can actually see it. It felt like a little bit of a Resident Evil game, but I think it's just escalated with the uh, uh, with the monsters, and uh, the zombies were there, but you see the montation and a big, big, big uh, humongous uh, monster you have to defeat later on when you're playing different players. And I just think uh, they, they, they were trying to change 
um, how Resident Evil games are going to be look like moving forward. But I think they didn't hit uh, the target where they want to go, and they released Seven and Seven. Yeah, it was a good game, but it didn't feel like a Resident Evil game either. Yeah. Um, I think they just tried to do this with with the remake of Resident Evil Two, and I think that's when they actually got back to the perfect survival horror game out there. Um, I know about Resident Evil 3 Remake, I got some backlash, but with Resident Evil 2, I think uh, the remake, I think that's when they started to get back in track of what was actually a Resident Evil game. Well, uh, I would just answer this, but I think that's the thing with Resident Evil 2. That's always been the best of any Resident Evil game, be it the old classic Resident Evil games or even the remakes. It's even on the remake games, it's considered the best one. And it's just, I wonder if it's just you get to play as Leon on Claire is why people consider that the best game. I, I I mean, I think it, for me, in my opinion, Resident Evil 2 Remake was the best game out there. Uh, some people might say like it was Resident Evil 1 Remastered, and I agree with it. It's one of the best games out there, but it's something that they did with the Resident Evil Remake. It has to do with the lighting and the sounds and, um, and the close encounters that you have in the hallways. It's just something like the darkness creates fear, the claustrophobia causes fear, and also the sound. So they play all of that in one single remake, and that's what makes, in my opinion, this game great. Uh yeah, so before we continue with what I have to say about um, Resi 5 and 6, I'll, um, what's your thoughts about Resi Resident Evil 4, 5 and 6, Phoneberry? Um, I do like them, but not as much as the other ones. If that makes sense, basically, like what you guys were saying, it seemed sort of like a different game, like it was really action-based and not really scary. Well, like, um... you didn't get all this, they didn't really have the, a lot of the puzzles. Suspense and everything. Uh, that's the thing. It was on the map um, in Resident Evil Five and Six. A lot of the stuff, what you needed to do, would show up on the map, so you knew where to go. Yeah. Whereas, like, especially in the first one, it was literally you didn't know what was coming around each corner. Really, no, did no, you? no, no. Well, um, this this is what my thoughts are about um, Resident Evil Four, Five, and Six. Is that. Um, they didn't know what direction they wanted to go. It's um, as soon as they developed number five, Uncharted came out, and do you know the jeep scene in Resident Evil Five where you're on the machine gun and you're chasing up and you're shooting the people in on the motorbikes and the trucks? That is very similar to Uncharted, where um, I forgot her name now. Elena is driving a jeep, and you're as your Nathan firing at the um, pirates. Do you know in the Again, in the motorbikes and jeeps, and I think that's what Capcom tried to do was emulate Uncharted. Yeah, and it just wasn't. It wasn't the same. <laughs> no, it wasn't the same. The question will be, will Capcom try to create a remake for Resident Evil Four and Resident Evil Five, or it will be like, you know what? I think we screw it up. Just leave it there. Oh, they're gonna make they're gonna remake one for Resident Evil Four because. The same with Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 4 is held up to a nice standard, and um, but for me, as I said, that's where it all starts to go downhill. It's because um, mm. for, uh, if you research the development of Resident Evil 4, the amount of times Capcom cancelled and restarted the development for Resident Evil 4 because they would finish the game, didn't like what the game turned out to be, either cancelled it and never did anything with it, or renamed it to a new game and then released it as something new. They did it. Um, one one of the Resident Evil Four developments was renamed as Devil May Cry. Oh really? Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, they finished the development of Resident Evil Four. They didn't think that that was part that they you know like the demons and stuff like that was part of the that wasn't Resident Evil, so they cancelled that as a Resident Evil game and just got we spent all this money. How are we going to get it back? Let's rename it Devil May Cry or De Devil May Cry. I mean. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, the Old May Cry actually feels like a Resident Evil 4, um, now that I think about it. Uh, at least the first one, right? Yeah. That's what they're referring Yeah. It feels like the, the, you have the castle environment, even the movement of uh, comparing Dante with Leon, they actually move almost the same way. And they kind of look, look the same, like how they look like, the hair, the face, the eyes. They actually look alike, now that I think about it. Yeah, I'm just going to change the picture on the, on here so yeah Elsa Walker this is what the original character out of Resident Evil 2 was supposed to be was Elsa Walker which you get a skin in Resident Evil 2 
Yes, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the Resident Evil remakes are considered the best ones again, and I still need to check chat because <laughs> I've got my iPad, I've got tech everywhere. So yeah, um, what are your thoughts on the new Resident Evil 7 and 8? Well, Resident Evil 7 came out two years ago, and the new Resident Evil 8 that's going to come up. Do you think that's kind of like getting back to the Resident Evil roots, or do you think it should have been a spin-off? Um, I mean, I did enjoy Resident Evil 7, not gonna lie. It actually gave me that sense of uh, survival horror yeah. from, from a, pers a first-person shooter. Uh, I mean, no action. Uh, the only thing that was a little bit off, obviously, there was no zombies. It was just like... Uh, I even forgot the name of it. It was just like the uh, the gooey monsters. Uh, um, I can't remember the name of the actual virus, um, but they're called um, fun fungus monsters. Oh, the fungus spores, spore monsters, spores on That's called That's it. So, so basically, with the spores, it, it, yeah, it's it's supposed to be. Let's let's see. Um, they they were supposed to be the the zombies of Resident Evil Sam, but but still. It didn't feel like a Resident Evil 7 game. Uh, I would just do like maybe Resident Evil 7 or Resident Evil Biohazard. Leave the 7 out of the, uh, the, the um, at least the canon perspective and just name it something else. Resident Evil Biohazard or Resident Evil Evil Family, something like that, but not Resident Evil 7. Let me just get a picture up of Resident Evil 8. Uh, so do you reckon this should be in Resident Evil 8? A werewolf. A werewolf? Let me just... Get lots of stars. Yeah, a werewolf yeah, within a Resident Evil game. Okay. So what do you what do you think that be did a werewolf? Uh, I think the werewolf is going to create uh, it's going to create some chaos. Yeah, I think it's going to be some um, typical to similar to Resident Evil Four when you were shooting oh. uh, the infected individuals and you shoot them multiple times and out of the blue they're just going to transform to a werewolf. And they're just going to come out of nowhere. I think this game is going to have, like, uh, when you're walking through a cabin or something, I think they're just going to come through the walls. Uh, it could be from uh, beneath you or through the sides or from top of you. So they're going to create a lot of havoc. When I saw the trailer first, I thought that it was not a Resident Evil game. I thought it was actually a Van Helsing game. And I was like, oh, okay, it's Van Helsing. I mean, I did enjoy the movie a couple of years ago. So, eh, okay, I'm fine. But then I saw the Resident Evil Tied and I was like, no, no way, come on. I, I don't buy it, to be honest. I think um, I'm going to play it, obviously. Uh, probably going to stream it. I'm going to enjoy the game. But does it feel like a Resident Evil game? No. I, ju no, I just no, think it, it feels like a standalone game. Um, I just want to answer Danny's question. Um, you've never played Resident Evil 7. Um, it is a good game, Danny, Resident Evil 7. I, it's, a, it's actually a very good game. It's just I don't personally think it should belong to the main series. It should have been a spin-off. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. And uh, once again, it's another virus. I get that. There's multiple virus, T virus, V virus. You have Las Plagas, where they uh, take out the the initial parasite to create a T virus and whatnot. So, so, but it still doesn't feel like a Resident Evil game. They, they try something new, which I did enjoy. And I think they're going to use the first person and the uh, survival horror again later on for another Resident Evil game, maybe for eight, or it's going to be for something else, for maybe uh, Resident Evil four. I, I really don't know. I think they're just trying to see what's going to happen with Resident Evil 8 before they proceed with another Resident Evil. Um, but 8, I don't, I don't know. It, sh it should be like a continuation of the, stand <laughs> of the uh, spin off of Resident Evil 7. I don't think it's. Sh and the name, I don't like the game, uh, the name. It's Village. I think they just found like a letter uh, in a dictionary that had V I L L. And so, oh, we can transform that to an 8. You know, so, oh, that's perfect. Village it is. I'm like, oh, come on. And, yeah, and it it's a, more of a cat. Feel to it, doesn't it? A little bit. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. what, that's what I thought it was when it first came, when the trailer first dropped. It's like, oh, it's the Resident Evil 4 remake. And it's like, Resident Evil 8. It's like, ah, that's not Resident Evil. <laughs> no, I don't feel like it's going to be a Resident Evil game. I mean, I, I don't see it with those eyes. I'm just going to see it with a, you know, with a blank slate. Uh, this is a, just a continuation of. Uh, Let's call it Biohazard, the Resident Evil 7. I'm not even going to call it Resident Evil. It's just going to be Biohazard and did you have Village, the continuation. Well, uh, the other, the, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, to continue about Resident Evil 7 and 8, Capcom did release two games. Well, they've, um, they've actually released 
three games using the first person mode. One was Resident Evil Survivor in yep, 98, 99, <laughs> which that was a gun con game. They released another one to do with Code Veronica, another gun survivor, but they also released Resident Evil. I forgot its name. Dead Aim? Dead, yeah, that's it. Dead Aim. And that was kind of like. That was released before Resident Evil 4. That was over the shoulder perspective, but as soon as you went to fire, you know, attack the enemies, it would go into first person. Yeah, that was the one um, where they were stuck on a ship, wasn't it? Uh, yes, yeah. Which they also used that, they've used that concept, they continued that concept with Resident Evil Revelations. Yes, yeah. basically Revelations con continue that part as well with what they did with 4. But I, I did enjoy Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2, uh, just because you, you have that sense of survival horror. I mean, from my perspective, what's a survival horror? But if you compare Revelations with 4, it doesn't feel like the same. I think with 4, you are kind of a super human with a lot of guns and ammo. With Revelations, yes. yeah, you still have that ammo, but you actually have to survive. Uh, in a certain way that you're not going to do with Leon. Leon is just a kick-ass. He's kicking everything. He's shooting everyone, and he's the, the main character. He's going to live. But with Revelations, I think it's uh, they, they put you on the spot. It's, uh, it's harder. My thought on the first Revelations, when I went on that, I thought, oh, yes. Well, when I heard about it, like, yes, and saw the trailer. Like, yes, a great Resident Evil. That's going to go back to its roots. And then I played it, and I thought, somebody who likes anime made this. <laughs> 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 I know you've seen the characters with the crazy air star. <laughs> Somebody who likes anime made this. <laughs> sorry, and, about, sorry. If and, anybody likes anime, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I don't want it in my Resident Evil. And and Vanger, just <laughs> I just to mention a point something that, that uh, Danny Ruiz pointed in the chat. So he says like so, since they're bringing werewolves, who knows when Resident Evil will uh will show will show what. Somehow bring vampires in. Actually, they're bringing vampires yeah. for Resident Evil 8. You can see them on the trailer. Yes. So yeah. that's why I'm like, this is the Van Helsing game. That's what I thought when I first watched the vampires, then the werewolves. I'm like, ah, this is all Van Helsing. It's all good. It looks like a good game. But then you see at the end Resident Evil Village, I was like, no! I mentioned this a few weeks ago when we was playing Red Dead. And I was like, no, they're not going to bring vampires in. I'm like, Gar uh, Vanguard, you've been reading a lot of rubbish. There's vampires in it. <laughs> <laughs> There's vampires. We see a, a group of ladies. I think they're eating or sucking blood out of uh, Ethan's hand. I think that's Ethan. I don't know. It, it appears to be Ethan. Uh, what was his last name? I keep forgetting. Uh, Ethan uh, Winters. So it appears to be the main character, and he's getting his blood sucked by vampires. So um, I don't know. Uh, it, it's They're bringing a lot of stuff that hasn't been seen before. We've seen blood sucking zombies, right? But they're actual vampires. And they didn't look like zombies. Um, they didn't look like werewolves. They were actually, I think it was like three females or four, and they were like in a, in a circle, and they were about to eat him or something. I don't know, to be honest. But Capcom is doing something they haven't seen before in a Resident Evil game. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah the, um, it's supposed to be set in, what is it, Transylvania? So I know that Resident Evil was in um The creators have always liked Western horror movies, but to style it on werewolves and a vampire i think it's too old old style horror it's zombies are, even though zombies have been around you know the voodoo zombie but the george a romero type zombie the one that was created either by a virus or a toxin that's kind of like new in the past what um since the late 60s and um that's what made it so popular because it was this new type of enemy that the only people who knew about this enemy was who watched zombie movies. But now they're going to the older style enemies and that they might as well just use instead of creating a tyrant or they might as well just use Frankenstein that chases you down. Yeah. yeah. They're not right here. And Danny Roos here in the chat says it feel out of place. Right. It will feel out of place. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean I agree with you, Danny. That's why I'm saying like uh just with this game, uh, uh, I'll buy it once again, I'll play it, I'll stream it. We're very happy to do it. So, but I just don't think it feels like a, it's it's going to feel like a Resident Evil game. I, that's 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 my two cents on this game. Uh, sorry about that. I was trying to type a message to people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> welcome. It's okay. 
Okay. Welcome, Nivra and Wilson. We're just talking about Resident Evil, um, what directions they've gone in, which um, one of the directions I want to talk about right now is Resident Evil 6, that the, the different directions they tried to make that game go to, survival horror within Toll Hope, and then action horror within, um, what, what, what did they call it, Slavonia, and then China, and um, what, where did um, Ada go to? She was all over the place, Ada, wasn't she? Can you say that again? The, um, res the direction of Resident Evil 6, you know, with it being set all over the world, you know, um, Leon and yep. Elena starting in the USA, Chris and Piers starting in, I think they started in China, or they started in um, Livonia as well. Was it Livonia? This, um, Jay. Yeah, you have Ada, Cherry, uh, who else? Elena, yeah. uh, Piers. And they're all over the world, yeah, <laughs> to be honest. they're all over the world, they didn't know how, um, it, the, that, the different directions that they tried to take that game into, if they just kept it set in Tall Hoax at the university or within that city, that would have been a perfect game because the university, that's kind of like set out as the classic Raccoon, Pl Raccoon City Police Department. Do you know, it's got a dark atmosphere. There's always that are a bit crowded. The zombies, but and that's the only time you fight against the zombies. Um, further into the game, that's where you start fighting against um, kind of like the last plague style monsters. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I think one of the interesting things that they did for Resident Evil Six, and you, you already mentioned it, was like the different stories. Let's call it campaign that you have throughout the world. Um, you we've seen that before in other Resident Evil games. Like you have the Leon story, you have the Claire, or or you're using Chris, or you're using someone else. But in this one, you're using how many characters? I think it was like six stories, right? If I'm not mistaken, six or seven. So I don't remember if it was six or seven for Resident Evil six, but that's that's actually a, a good thing about the game that I did really enjoy the, the multiple stories, the different perspective, but at the same time. Um, they, the, the game started really good. You started with Leon. You're in Raccoon City, or what appears to be Raccoon City. I don't remember very well. Uh, but after a while, it just fades out, and it just doesn't feel like a Resident Evil game anymore. No, it never hurt. If they kept it in one location where Leon and Elena was trying to take down the people responsible for releasing the virus, Chris and Piers yeah. was fighting against them, trying to rescue people. Sherry was trying to, you know evacuate Jake to get the cure from him and then Ada being Ada trying to steal the cure. <laughs> yeah. So, then, 801. Yeah. In every game, always trying to steal something, huh? And um, a new picture's going to pop up of Jill Valentine throughout her incarnation within the Resident Evil games. Jill. Have a look at... I did like Ada, though. I thought she was cool. Yeah, I just resized it. Yeah, so yeah, that's the different style of Jill Valentine's, different designs. Different hairstylists, that's what's happening here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, you've mentioned before, haven't you, that Resident Evil 3 was too short. It seems like we're leaving Thornberry out of the conversation. She's just like <laughs> in the background, like, I agree. <laughs> Sorry, Thornberry. I'm, I'm, I'm shy. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. What, what do you think? What, what do you think about Resident Evil Three? Uh, uh, maybe the original one, and then we can transition to Resident Evil Three Remake. Yes. Um, well, the original one was my favorite one, actually. <laughs> um, I kind of got a bit obsessed with it when it came out, and just completed it as many times as you can. Because <laughs> um, I don't know if you remember, you got the epilogues at the end when you completed it. Yeah, I was like, just about to say that's that's one of the requirements for the epilogues was to complete it eight yeah. times. Because you get all the, you unlock all these different costumes and the epilogues and that, and I've still got the save file on my old memory card <laughs> 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 with all of the extras unlocked because I refused to get rid of it. it so, so, <laughs> so you've still got the memory card. Yeah, I've still got it. That belongs I in a museum. I still have them <laughs> somewhere. I know I have them. <laughs> That thing belongs in a museum. <laughs> it belongs in a museum. I should have got that soundbite because let me try a soundbite. 
Here we go. Ah oh, shit. Here we go again. Worst place in the world. <laughs> so I don't know if you heard that, if you've got the sound on, but you should have heard um, Cal CJ, Cal Johnson. Oh shit, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I liked the remake. Like it was fun and everything, but it felt like they'd cut a lot of the story out of it. Yes, yeah, yeah. they did. That's, then that's unfortunate. I I think I did prefer the original to be honest. Yeah, it, no, I hear. It was, it was good, but it was just like, oh, where's this bit? Where's that bit? Why is it so short? <laughs> and and I, and I think something that Resident Evil remake. Uh, didn't do just like Resident Evil, the original one, the three, uh, was like Jill was able to explore a little bit the uh, Raccoon City in a certain way. And with Remake, it was just everything like squared out. This is where you're going to go and that's it. You, you go here, this is the big donut part, and Nemesis is going to follow you and then you're going to hop on in a train and forget about Raccoon City. And there's no Raccoon City Police Department. I mean, you go with Carlos, but you don't go with Jill. So that's short in the games as well. So... Uh, it was just a short game. The original one was way better. Um, I felt the the menace for Nemesis at every corner. You, I wasn't even aware where he was going to come from. I was like, well, this is it. Next corner, he, he's going to be there. Stars. And then I'm like, oh, shit, here I die. Or where's the safe? I don't have any uh, ink ribbon. I'm dead. Forget about it. With Resident Evil 3, it was just, the remake was like, ah, I'm going to be okay no matter what. I just yeah. have to run. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I, I didn't feel the same, like, thing that I did for Resident Evil 3 compared to its remake. Whereas for Resident Evil 2 and its remake, it's like, F yeah, this is the greatest Resident Evil game that's been created. Yeah, I thought the Resident Evil 2 remake was, like, they didn't seem to cut anything out of it like they did with the Resident Evil 3 remake. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it still had quite a lot of stuff from the original but also new bits as well well um do, do you even um create some new content and elements to the resident evil but then um, they kind of tried to create new content for resident evil 3 but decided to cut a lot of the old content out instead of like trying to merge the two together yeah which was quite disappointing to be honest <laughs> Yeah, it was a little bit unfortunate. I think it's actually one of the first times that you also have one of the tyrants actually running. If I'm not mistaken, uh, if I remember correctly, on the first Resident Evil, you have a tyrant, but it doesn't run. It just follows you. And the second one, you have Mr. Ed's following you, it doesn't run. But with Nemesis, dude, there's no winning. The guy is going to be running right after you, no matter what. He has a rocket launcher. He's going to hit you multiple times, and you're dead. So I think that's the menace. And also, he comes out of nowhere. You don't know where he's going to be there. Or he, the first time you went through this hallway, he's not there. But the second time you go through it, he might be there. So I think the menace that he uh, shows in this game is just what makes this game one of the best uh, Resident Evil games out there. So I'll say, like, maybe Resident Evil 2 remake, the original Resident Evil 2, and then I'll go to Resident Evil 3, original one, not the remake. That's my top three. Well, I know I mentioned earlier, they might as well just get Frankenstein to chase players around, which that, 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 that's kind of like what Tyrant and um, Nemesis are, isn't it? They're the, they're the ultra zombies that have been stitched together to be the best and greatest bioweapons, B.O.W.s. As uh, mm. Shinji Mikami has stated a lot of times that he got a lot of inspiration for the characters from a lot of um, Western horror movies. Um, the Crocodile, he got that from Joe's. Obviously, the zombies I got from George A. Romero. And, uh, <laughs> The Last Plagueis, for some reason, um, thinking about it, The Last Plagueis and the way that like, they mutate is kind of like an inspiration from the thing. Kind of like, well, not an inspiration, but kind of a very reminiscent of the thing with, um, what's his name? Kate Russell. That Kate Russell starting. Yeah. Mm, I don't know if I see the movie, so... Oh, you need to check sure. that movie out. I need to go back, yeah. So hey, Wilson, welcome. Resident Evil 2, 100%. There you go, yes. yeah. Resident Evil 2, bit. in my my opinion, the greatest... Well, both the classic and the remake, the best Resident Evils that have ever been made. 
Hello, Cup Trick. How are you? How is everybody yeah. in chat? I think uh, something that we also need to to mention, it's a competition that Resident Evil games had um, when they were developing games. We also have the Silent Hill franchise trying to do competition to Capcom for the Resident Evil franchise. So I think that's why maybe, uh, and this is going back to 4 and 5, I think that's why they changed their style, just to try to get them out from the Silent Hill uh, survival horror style that was similar to uh, Resident Evil, and they just moved to a, s a separate one, and Silent Hill almost stay almost the same. I, I think it has stayed the same since the first game. Hey, how you doing, Nemesis? Look at that. <laughs> oh, Barry. No, that is Nemesis. Yeah, Nemesis in um, Resident Evil 3 remake with his um, bloody slanted nose looks like he's been going in a boxing match with um, <laughs> Rambo. <laughs> so, look at that. Look at that image. He looks more menacing there than the actual remake. In the remake, no way. I was like, what the hell they did to Nemesis? Yeah. And it looked the same. And I was like, oh, man, forget about it. I know there's a game. I'm trying to remember. I don't know if it's... Uh, it's not... Re oh, my God. I don't know if it's uh, Operation Wrecked City. Uh, I think there's ne Nemesis comes in through that game. I don't remember once again. It's uh, it could be another game, but Nemesis is in that game. I think it is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and he's a menace, but he looks like the actual Nemesis from Resident Evil Three. Yeah, he does. So what they did in the remake was like, what the hell? You just killed one of the best uh, tyrants out there. Uh, hello, Andrew Dreams. Oh, it's all right, Aaron. I hope that your computer is all right and that it's not it, it, your computer crashing is not gonna. Basically, destroy your computer. Yeah, um, Capcom's, um, they've always tried to try and, you know, an online version of Resident Evil and they've always failed. They, they tried to do it with Operation Raccoon City and that got a, a lot of um, negative negativity from the fans. Then they tried doing with um, Umbrella Core. And again, the negativity that that got from the fans, it's like Capcom straight away stopped supporting them and then. Capcom's just released a new one. I forgot what it's Resistance. Yeah, Resistance, but it's for Resident Evil 3. Yeah. Adrian and it's still got a, a little bit of backlash as well. Yeah. Hey, Dredston. Welcome to um, the very amateur produced podcast. So, have you. Welcome, buddy. Have you, uh, have you been it on phone very. Have been on the previous online versions of Resident Evil. I don't think I. I don't think I have. I tried. Um, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the Umbrella Core one. And I didn't really get on with it, to be honest. No, I. I as a Resident Evil fan, I will buy every game, but then complain about them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good critic too, you know. They, they, you go buy the game and you give your opinion. Of course, that's like, that's how you're supposed to do it. This is the Resident Evil fan base. We don't like that game, and then it's like take our money, and then we're like we don't like that game. Yeah, don't like that one. But here, take our money. <laughs> that's what's gonna happen with Resident Evil Eight. It's like ah, oh, we didn't like the trailer, but you know what? Here's my money. I want to yeah. play the game. But <laughs> anyway, just in case it is good. Yeah, because yeah, I, um, I've been a lot of Resident Evil fan groups, and we we're always complaining about the new Resident Evil game. And then as soon as it's released, it's like everybody just does screenshots, like I bought it. <laughs> 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 and it's like well, who was boycotting it? And then so yeah, somebody says, "Oh, who was boycotting it? I bought it." <laughs> I think with with the remakes as well is like I think like. The people from the older generation, like us, who played the originals, were kind of got a higher expectation of how it's going to be. But then, I I guess they try and make it so it's attracting new people as well. Yeah. And it's, I guess it's trying to find the right balance between what the old fans would want and what new fans would want. Yeah, um, that's the, that's why um, with Resident Evil 4, the change to the third person perspective was to try and bring in new fans because the tank control system of the classic ones was get going out of fashion and then they went to third person and then as they later developed Resident Evil 5 and 6, this, they were starting to get a lot of backlash from the third person and that's when they went to the first person and again, they're getting a lot of backlash. 
<laughs> yeah, there's, there's no way to please uh, the, the consumers. At this point, they're like, you know what? We're going to do Resident Evil 2 Remake. We're just going to leave it like how we did, how it was. Kind of similar. Oh, no, no, but no, no, let's no. make better graphics. And, uh, you know, the zombies are going to be, you know, way better and scarier. Ah, well, that's good. That's why, that's why they have good reviews. And then, yeah, that's it. Resident Evil 2. Everybody's up in arms how great <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, hello, Dres Dresden. Sorry for being quiet. We're just chatting about Resident Evil. And uh, so, something to to keep in mind, I think with the first person, uh, what they they were trying to do is, you remember the uh, teaser trailer or playable trailer, better known as PT. That's how you call it, yes. playable trailer. Yeah. So I think with the with the first trailer, when the trailer, with the, let me rephrase that, when the demo came out in 2013, Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro, they tried to create the, the the perfect horror game or survival horror game out there. It was supposed to be a Silent Hill game. And everybody played the trailer. I mean, I, I I I hope so. It was an awesome trailer. I think I still have it on my PS3. That I was not expecting anything on that trailer uh, on that demo. It was actually scary as hell. And I think that set up the uh, uh, a change of re or change of events, let's call it, or a change of reaction. Everybody tried to emulate that demo, and that's why you have Resident Evil Seven as a first person, and they tried to emulate the house, the hallways. The pictures and unfortunately they didn't hit the you know they needed some zombies or spore zombies uh and they they just mess it up yeah i was about to mention that because that was so popular because um konami actually dumbed down the graphics to make it look like an independent developer did it and then as soon as you got out of the house into the streets and norman norman Reedus was revealed and then silent hills that's where all the hype came into it hello ncm welcome we're just talking about the playable trailer that was called PT for Silent Hills and how great it was and how that that um, reception that that got changed the editing that Capcom used for Resident Evil. Yeah, and not only Resident Evil, I think for a lot of horror games out there uh, or the, a lot of developers, maybe small or, or big companies, are trying to create horror games for our first person just because of that how good that uh, playable demo was. They were like, oh, this is terrific. This is how you create horror. But actually, who created the horror wasn't even, it wasn't even Silent Hill. It was actually Resident Evil. But Resident Evil was like, you know what? Let's go with first person. Let's see what could go wrong. Well, um, <laughs> the reason why uh, horror games are called survival horror games is because of the first ever Resident Evil. That was the first game to have that name given to it, survival horror. Yeah, yeah. I agree. They created the uh, the whole concept of what should be considered a survival horror. And it's a shame they can't keep that concept <laughs> on, on all of their games. Yeah. It's more like action games, some of them now on earth. Now, I, I know that me and you have been taking the front steps of um, the, the podcast. Um, does that, is there anything you wish to speak about, Thornberry? Um... Since you're quiet. <laughs> <laughs> You've put me on the spot now. <laughs> it's, it's, normally, it's normally in chat on a live stream where I'm quiet and I think the roles are um, reversed. The tables have turned. <laughs> oh, it's a chill podcast, so I don't, I don't want to like, take over anything. All right, sorry. Um, yeah, so is there anything you would like to speak about, about Resident Evil or any game? Silent Hill? I don't know, like, I did like Silent Hill, but I don't, I thought it was always, like, quite different to Resident Evil. Oh, uh, yeah, Resident Evil is more action, body horror, whereas Silent Hill is more psychological. Yeah. But uh, the first one I played, that was the second one. I didn't actually play the first one until, like, a few years ago. You see, yeah, because I was a hardcore Resident Evil fan, I didn't play Resident Evil game until, like, 2005. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I'm a Resident Evil fan. I can't, I can't support the rival. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was playing, I was playing the the rival games at the same time. Um, I think uh, one of my favorite Silent Hill out there uh, game is the uh, the second one, and also Silent Hill Four, The Room. I think those those are the uh, most psychological horror games that I played in my life. They're very creepy. Yeah. Especially... I, like, I like them the first time. The first three of them, I think they're the good ones. The first three games. Yeah, they were really good. I did enjoy them. Uh, with the room, obviously, it's well, it's it says Silent Hill Four, but it's just 
doesn't feel like a Silent Hill. It's it's, it's almost the same situation with with Resident Evil. I think the the room Silent Hill Four, the room should have been a standalone or a spinoff game from Silent Hill. Not even call it Four. It's just like no, it doesn't. I mean, it shows some uh, stories that uh, go in accordance to one and two and three with the uh, with the evil entities and the uh, uh, religious sect that's involved. But I think it's it goes. I think. Silent Hill and Resident Evil went through the same phases. It's like, well, we need to, we need to uh, evolve, or we're just gonna die. Which I was, so I, I think was, that started I was, playing, with changing a lot of stuff, and <laughs> they started, and they were doing his uh, hit and miss at well, this point. I was about to mention that that when both Silent Hill and Resident Evil was at the top of their game, it's when it was like the PlayStation One era and the early PS2 era, where they had a limitation of hardware, and as soon as technology was getting faster you know getting better faster and faster it's when they started to lose what type of game they were you know we had yeah, better yeah, graphics definitely. better gra- games were starting to have better graphics and we were starting to have better storylines then that, and that's the same at that time which is the same time as the downfall of both of the series and somehow Res- um, silent hill hasn't been able to recover mm. yeah well, silent hill i think uh, i'm sorry go ahead Tor- Tor- Torberry. no all right um, I was going to say, I think the story in 4 was good, but like some of the mechanics were just irritating. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> they had like the ghosts in it, didn't they, all of a sudden in 4, and it was just like, what's going on here? And yeah, what was it, you had to have these candles that you had to light, so the ghosts leave you alone, and just random stuff like that. And it was just like, I never had to do this before on these games. <laughs> yeah, I think they were just trying to try new things, and with the candle, it was like, yeah, you have the candles for the spirit to leave you alone, but you also have your apartment, and that was like your safe spot where you save the game, you can heal up, and you start using candles all over the game or swords to keep the spirits. You know, like you, you cannot kill the spirit. It was just a sword. You keep you, you you stab them with the with the sword, and they stay there for the rest of the game unless you pull that sword. But the the, the spirits start attacking your apartment, and then you can heal. And if you use all your candles, you're done. Forget about it. Yeah. You're, you're not going to be able to heal. You're not going to be able to finish the game. So I think that they were trying new things in this game, and it's just like Resident Evil. Uh, you're not punching a boulder, but we're going to use other uh, psychological horror, uh, horror situations to see what happens. Which um, I was about to say, list the downfall of Silent Hill was um, Silent Hill Dampo. See, that's um, the one yeah. where, where it was like, I did like it, but it was... Another one where it was like it didn't really feel like a Silent Hill game. And yeah, um, the only thing that I will that I will ever say that Silent Hill is far superior than a Resident Evil is the movie adaptation of Silent Hill is far superior than the Resident Evil adaptation. But yet, Resident Evil are the most successful video game adaptation movies. They're the, they're the ones that have sold the most. They're the most popular. But yet, Silent Hill its movie adaptation isn't that quite known, that well known. And it's an amazing movie. Yeah, I really liked the movies. The movies were great. I did enjoy them. Especially the uh, screeching sound that you hear from the coming from Silent Hill. That was from the town. That was like that was like on point compared to the uh, the video games. Which I think came um, with Silent Hill, the greatest part of um, the most greatest um, thing that Silent Hill did was to introduce Pyramid Head, as that is the most recognisable villain from any video game series, other than Nemesis and Tyrant, within the survival horror genre. Yeah, I remember the first time that I saw Pyramid Head and uh, Silent Hill 2. I think that's the part when you're hiding in a closet, if I'm not mistaken, um, and then you see this big-ass sword and you're like, what in the hell did I just got into? This is it. <laughs> this is how I die. So it was. It was really scary. It was yeah. for me. It was. A, it was scary. I mean, I was. A, I was very young when I saw it. I was like, oh crap! There it is. This is how I die. Yeah. Let me just change the graphic. Um, I was. I was gonna say. I think that's what. Um, Silent Hill with Pyramid Head. Pyramid Head was a bit inspired by Resident Evil with the Tyrant, Nemesis, and you know the main and the end boss fight with, within the Resident Evil games.
So what's going to be the next thing for Resident Evil and Silent Hill? Uh, apart from A, do you think uh, with A, it's going to be the downfall? Or it's just going to be something great and they're going to keep no, pushing uh, that? Because Resident Evil, Resident Evil 7 was the best, first experience of many people of a Resident Evil game on the 8th generation console. That's got a lot of fans that nobody, you know, that nobody's ever played Resident Evil game before, and that's going to carry over onto Resident Evil Eight, and then you're going to get the ad, the hardcore fans that have been there for years, and even though like, oh, it's not a Resident Evil game, they're still going to buy it, and then you're going to get the hardcore Resident Evil Four fans that they're still going to buy it, because it's very reminiscent of Resident Evil Four setting, you know, it's in a, a wayward village, a medieval style setting. Yeah, you have the castle. You have the uh, the monsters that I kind of, I don't know. I'm mean, I'm not even gonna call them monsters. I think they're just werewolves or plagues evolved. I just don't know what it is. What type of virus it is? That, that there's no hint what the uh, what type of virus it is. Maybe from like I guess, I guess wolves or dogs or something. I don't know. <laughs> Rabies. <laughs> Rabies evolved. <laughs> we'll call it Rabies 2020. Rabies 19. But, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, you... you... No, no, go ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to ask if any of you have played Resident Evil Zero or... Yes, yes, I have. Which, um, that is actually one of my least favourite classic Resident Evil games. Uh, it's a great game. It's very hard to do on the hard... If you go on the hard difficulty, that is actually quite hard to complete. Is that is that the Resident Evil for what is it like Alpha Team and the train? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's Resident Evil Four with yeah. Rebecca and Billy. Yeah, I never played that one. You got me there. Was it a good one? It, it was okay. Yeah, it was all right. It expanded the story within the universe, <laughs> but <laughs> what, was that? In the, were, were they the first ones to arrive to um, to the mansion, right, or to that area? Well, uh, yeah, um, Bravo Team. Um, there was a outbreak of disappearances and murders within Raccoon City Forest, forest and the surrounding yeah. area. And um, Bravo team was sent ahead to scout the Raccoon Forest first, and their helicopter was sabotaged by Albert Wesker, obviously, as he was working with Umbrella. Right. And um, they found a train. Well, they found a jeep that was overturned, obviously attacked by the Cerberus zombie dogs, and then by zombies, and they... Billy went to go seek refuge on a train after that was attacked, and then that's what Bravo team came across. And during the game, some of them die. You know, you find out how some of the characters died from Bravo team, and then at the end of it, you see Richard and Rebecca heading towards the mansion. Oh, gotcha. Interesting. Now you got me into it, I'll probably buy it. <laughs> I'll probably play it. Because I remember the game came out, um, what was it, Nintendo GameCube a few years ago. 2002, 2003, I believe. Yeah, I kind of like that I era. On the, on the and I, and I, I never bought the game, and I was like, yeah, you know what, forget about it. Uh, but now you got me intrigued, now I want to play it. I'll probably buy it for the computer and just play it. It might be, um, on, I think it might be on sale right now on the PS4. It could be, with the, with the trailer Resident Evil came in, uh, coming out, what was it, maybe a few weeks ago. Um... They need to <laughs> they need to start hyping people. It's like, well, we showed you the trailer now. You're probably going to be wondering what happened to Resident Evil. Here you go. Buy the game in a discount. So, so all of them might be in discount prices. So since we've been talking about Resident Evil and Silent Hill, what do you think about Evil Within? The spiritual, uh, the spiritual successor to Resident Evil as the guy uh, who created, helped to create Resident Evil, Shinji Mikami, that's his creation, trying to get back or, or survival aura to its roots. Yeah, uh, I mean, I just played the first one. I played the demo for Evil Within 2, and the first one was... I, I did enjoy it. I felt like I was playing Assassin's Creed for a moment, you know, when you're doing the stealth skills yes. and you have to just burn the uh, the spirits. I'm just going to call it spirits because they're, they're, they are not even zombies. Uh, they're from another dimension, psychological dimension. Um, I did enjoy the game. There's a few monsters out there that... Uh, I, and I'm a horror game freak and a horror movies freak. I I'll love say, everything say, that horror. Yeah. But there's a boss fight right there. That's the lady with that has like a lot of arms. I forgot her name. That's creepy as hell. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you have a picture of Tell, but uh, no. no I, I finished the game. And I was like, I'll never play this game ever again, <laughs> just because of that <laughs> boss fight. I'll be Absolutely. like, no, forget about it. 
Bearded, if you can um, do me a favour, if you get a picture, because I can't yeah. use my keyboard on my PC because I've got hot keys yeah, set yeah. up to every single key. <laughs> you're fine, you're fine. If you send me a picture from Discord, I can copy it and put it up yeah. for Black Woman. Yeah, um, you want... do you know the first zombie that you see in Evil Within? Um, that, because it's created by the same person, it is that's a fan service the way he turns around to reveal itself to the, to the player is what this one is. Let me just get rid of that and put this one back up. Yeah. So yeah, do you, um, Cindy McCammy, we use this scene within. Yeah, he used, he used this scene with it um, in Evil Within again. Oh. Which, um, as I've got that up, this is one of my favourite scenes in any Resident Evil game. Interesting. No, you're right. That's what you get when you when you go to the to the hospital or the insane asylum. That's what you see. Kind of similar. Interesting. Well, let me send you the picture that I found for that lady. That that lady gives me the nightmares. Um, I'm sending this through Discord. Give me one second. Uh, and I had the picture right here. There you go. Oh, I think I just posted in the chat. Oh, my bad. But it's there. <laughs> you can tell that's a very Japanese Jap whore uh, genre right there. It's similar to Yuan, or better known here as in the uh, like in the Western side, the uh, the Grudge series. I think that's what the uh, director was trying to implement. It's like, oh, you want you want horror? Let's start implementing Jap horror here. And that's what they started doing for this game, which I which, which I enjoy. And uh, I played the first game. I really thought that it was an awesome game, and I was gonna play the second one, but then I noticed that this, the same lady is on the second game, and I said, like, you know what, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> so I never purchased the game. That's the reason. <laughs> no, no worries. I never really played it. I think I I started playing it, the first one, and I never really finished it. All right, so Willwood says, I will never forget meeting the, the the first time the liquor. Yeah, the first time I saw the liquor, I was like, yeah. oh, crap. Yeah. 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 Uh, that woman is creepy as hell by the way <laughs> yeah so that's the reason why i didn't play um evil within 2 basically she is um it's one of the hardest boss fights that i played in that game and i was like you know what yeah if i finish the game perfect but then the second one came out and i saw the trailer and i saw some people playing i was like yeah you know what forget it nope <laughs> one of the it's a silly movie, uh, now that I think about it, but The Grudge, for me, has been the most scary movie ever. Yeah. My The original, I'm yeah. talking Yuan, the Japanese version, yeah. not the American one. I ain't seen the Yuan. American one. I ain't seen the American one. <laughs> no, no don't, don't, don't even watch the American version. That doesn't count. But the Jap one, it was like, oh, wow. This movie is perfect. Uh, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a little bit old. It's an old movie, but basically, that's what I think that's what the... Uh, the game creator was trying to put here a little bit of Jap horror uh, involved. I think that, that was terrific. Going on about um, Gruhon or the Garage, the thing that creeps me out was when the little boy started screaming, you know, and it was the cat sounds oh, that yeah. was coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. That freaks me out a bit. Like, what the hell is this? Oh, hold on. I'm going to show you another image from the game that it's actually some things I need to do to destroy her. Um, Which, uh, but... the thing about Evil Within, as I said, Evil Within, the first one, because it's created by the same guy who helped create Resident Evil series. It's very inspired by Resident Evil and Evil Within 2. That's got elements that's been inspired by Silent Hill. Okay. Yep. You can see Silent Hill here in a combination of Resident Evil games with Evil Within. So, and uh, I know 
you remember the picture that you have from Chris? Yes. Um, I know we're going a little bit back now, but the picture of Chris, if you see him, does he look like the Chris, the typical Chris that we have seen through the uh, Resident Evil games? Um, it always changes. It's um, In Resident Evil 7, he was skinny, and <coughs> fans didn't like that Chris because they remodeled him. And then if you... The Chris <laughs> that's in Resident Evil 8, he can, he's kind of like reminiscent of Chris from Resident Evil 5 and 6. So this well, is... it was like a, it seems like a process. It sounds like, a, well, he was very skinny. He went to do CrossFit, and later on, he just like got tired of it and got, you know... This is the image of... that Thornberry sent me earlier. <laughs> From Jill? <laughs> one, one, sorry, um, I have to refit it to the stars. No, it's fine, it's fine. So, yeah. I think that's the only picture I took when I played that game, because I was like, oh, that was a cool picture of my, my One very? <laughs> Why do you have Why did you take that picture? <laughs> <laughs> I had it as my um, profile picture on the PlayStation for a while when it came out. I just thought it would make a cool picture. <laughs> Out of many pictures of Resident Evil 3. <laughs> I've got it's the same thing when, um, when the Final Fantasy VII remake came out, I got a cool picture of Tifa and had her as my profile picture for ages. <laughs> well, I was going to say, Beaded's a bit quiet out there. There he is. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, yeah, so... Um, talking about Resident Evil and how popular their movies are, even though I've, um, I've seen the movies, but I think the Silent Hill movie is better, and this, the, I'm going to show a scene, and this scene is basically done within the Resident Evil movie. Oh, listen, Vanguard, uh, Will would just posted a comment here, it says, when I first saw uh, Chris in Resident Evil 7, I thought that it was Chris's son, because he looked so young, and I agree, I mean, it, it, it appears, well, uh, um... I mean, I mean, he was young, but I was like, well, this is not the Chris that we know of. This Was this Resident Evil game happened before the traditional Resident Evil games from Brixton City? Well, let, so, me, let me expand upon upon that with um, Willwood on You Beard. It. Um, go, it goes yep. back to Resident Evil Revelations. If you ever saw that trailer, there was a guy you know, on the boat in a chair with a hood over his head, and then... It, yep. um, because it was for the new generation of consoles, once the hood was revealed, it's like, is that Chris Redfield? Or is that Hunk? And then it was re later revealed that it was neither one of them and that the Capcom removed him. And it's kind of like, and, you know, was that Hunk? Was that a clone of Chris? You know, or is Hunk the clone of Chris? And then once Resident Evil 7 was released and Chris was revealed at the end, that's that got the same reception from the fan base. Is that that's not the real Chris? That's either a clone that Umbrella has created or that is Hunk without his gas mask on. Gotcha. Yeah. No, uh, I agree. And since the question... they, and since yeah. they revealed the trailer for Resident Evil Eight, where Chris actually looks like Chris from Resident Evil Five and Six, I think that's got more push to it now. Like the guy from Resident Evil Seven, that's supposed to be Chris Redfield, is a clone or unk without his gas mask on. That's a good perspective. No, nope. uh, it's uh, they can. <laughs> no, I, I agree, and I I think what you're saying makes sense. Um. The, the, the problem is, like, we'll have to see what happens in the game. They're probably going to say, like, well, that's actually, that was actually Chris. And I don't know, maybe 20 years happened be between 7 and 8. And that's why Chris looks very old. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's in, still in the air. So I guess we'll have to see what well, happens. Uh, I, as I just mentioned about Hunk, Chris, and a clone, which Capcom later used that concept for Resident Evil Revelations 2, where Albert Res Wesker... Um, Albert Wesker, there's like seven Wesker siblings. Albert Wesker has um, seven siblings, which Alex Wesker, who's from Revelations 2, is his sister, obviously. But they're all clones of one, um, yeah. of somebody, and that's that's what caused people was thinking that was the clone of Chris or Ung. That's where they got the concept for that from. Interesting. Um, have you... Uh, let me get... Yeah, the, the question is, do you think Wesker is going to be in this game? No. I, I, no. I, um, I think the Capcom have finally finished their run with Chris. Uh, uh, I mean, with Wesker, you know, since they killed him at the end of <clears throat> number five. Yeah, I think they've finished with his storyline. And I'm just trying to find that picture that you've just sent. Yeah, the, if, if it's not one that I sent you, it's just for... Um... Evil Within. 
That was a pain in the ass doing that. <laughs> I remember that fight. She is the hardest fight boss in that game. Yeah, it is. And you know what? Um, I might do a stream of that game. Why not? Just one more time, just for fun. Yeah. Or when I get into that spot, like that monster, I'll be like, you know what? This is the last episode. <laughs> it was stressful. It, it just... I ah, know it was scary as hell. What are you gonna do first? Are you gonna start? Are you gonna start with Evil Within two first, then go on to Evil Within? <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's let's be honest. I need to finish Resident Evil first, so maybe I'll do this later on. But yeah, Evil Within. Once again, I think it was a good horror game, and the second one looks way better. I might play it, but um, I don't know. I, I think the future of video games are gonna keep improving they're gonna get more realistic with graphics and good engines that ah, we're gonna get Willwood has just put some of the cup in chat no but i'm sure wes could um have a comeback in I mean, he could have a comeback in resident evil 4 as that is going to be a remake when when albert wesker was still alive mm. no but i'm sure wesker have a comeback in right now i'm order uh, that is the hardest part in any evil within game is that boss fight yeah, Willwood says the same thing. Hardest part of the Evil Within. It's this boss fight. That's what, for me, it, it creeped the hell out of me. And I was like, yeah, you know what? This is it. I, um, <laughs> I, it was my game's my adventure. In I fact, this is, where, this is where I die. But to be honest, I play another horror game called um, Visage on a computer. If you haven't done so, it's one of the best horror games. I'll say, like, maybe it's the best horror game out there. Um, it's just wanted to expand upon my games my adventures um that is just put up in chat where he says that resident evil was inspired by home sweet home is that um my games my adventure the two creators of the resident evil series Shinji mikami and i can never remember the other guy is that Shinji mikami helped create resident evil series and the other guy who helped create the resident evil series was the creator of S sweet home yep that's okay. true so yeah it's uh, resident evil is actually the spiritual successor to sweet home and that was released only in Japan on the NES. Which I, I was not aware of that. I've That's actually been, new. I have tried to find a copy of that game for years, and I've never been lucky to find one. Have you tried uh, eBay? Maybe. That's where I get my my so, games that are really sorry about, old. Sorry about cut, um, cutting you out, Peter. Ben, what were you going to mention about that um, physics? No, not at all. Uh, nothing too crazy. I was just going to say, like, uh, now that we're talking like regarding Resident Evil, uh, Evil Within. I'll just say, like, the I think the best horror game out there that I have played in my life, it's Visage. That game, I finished the first part, which is, the, it's divided by chapters, and I finished the first one, and the second one, I was like, you know what, I'll hold on into this. <laughs> but it'll, it'll give you some nightmares, and uh, it's kind of really creepy. It's, it's, it ha it's basically a copy, or the creators copy uh, P.T., and they just ran it through a, a better engine, like a more uh, better engine. I mean, it's, this game was developed probably like around 2019 or 2018. Um, so it looks a little bit better, but it has that PT vibe. And that's what I was trying to say a couple of a uh, couple of minutes ago regarding how PT evolve or uh, release the change reaction of how horror games are going to look uh, in the future. So PT is actually uh, this is just one of those games where you're going to be like, yeah, no. Um, my game is my adventure. Currently on the PS4, it's digitally. I think you can also buy it physically. There's a survival horror game called Home Sweet Home. I just I need. To, I've always been needing to research it to probably see if it's a remake or the spiritual successor to actually Sweet Home. I I have the game. It's not a bad one. Um, I streamed that game, but it was through Twitch a long time ago. And um, it feels uh, it has like a similar. Vive or Evil Within, to be honest. Uh, because it's more spiritually than nothing, but I don't know. It, it was a good game. Does he have good reviews? I never searched if he had good reviews. Yeah, I, um, I think he should be in Resident Evil 4, Willwood. Um, to me, Albert Wesker has always been the main protagonist within the Resident Evil games. And uh, some useless information concerning Albert Wesker and Resident Evil 5 is that the act, the voice actor who portrayed Albert Wesker 
inspired his voice acting from Jeremy Irons portraying Scar from Lion King, which also was made, the game was made by Capcom. Taru! Hello! Hey Haru! That's, that's... Welcome! Hey! Welcome Haru, welcome! How you doing? And what I was going to say as well, I know it was like ages ago you were talking about Japanese horror. <laughs> but it's, I think it counts as a survival horror game. Um, have either of you ever played any of the Project Zero games? Yes, I have, yeah. With the camera. I think they were called, yeah, I think they were called Fatal Frame in some countries. Yeah, Fatal Frame in the US and Japan. Um... I, I have not. I've seen a lot of people stream it. I've seen video uploads, but I have never played the game. I really liked those when I was younger. They were really scary. <laughs> that, that's the one that you have the like the camera and you have to take pictures of the ghosts in order to push them back or something like that. Yes, yeah. it was quite good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I seen streams, but I never played it. Which, did um, they have for PS? What well, um, what did you say? B? did you cut out a second there? Oh, do, do they have them for PS4 that you guys know of? Uh, Final Frame? I don't think so. That's only Nintendo, right? No, I don't think no, so. No, I don't think I they do. I had the first. I had the first three on PS2. I think it was. PS2. That, I think it was on the Wii. I think Nintendo yes. bought it out. Well, that's what I was going to mention, and I completely forgot because we went on a different subject. Um, it was rumored that last year, so because of Konami's stupid decisions to cancel the most popular games and fire their most popular game creator that they lost a lot of money and it was rumored that in 2019 sony raided their intellectual property and got hold of and ownership of the silent hill series oh really yes Ooh. and there was it's also rumored that they was able to get all the, you know as lo along with silent hill they was able to get all the ownership of metal gear solid oh wow it's just it was just a rumor that was going around all the gaming you know chat boards and everything but yeah so um in the future we might see a silent hill and a metal gear solid developed by the in-house sony development team oh interesting yeah the tattoo lady horror <laughs> she was terrifying <laughs> <laughs> that's from the um uh, from the fatal frame yeah that is from the third one she's like uh... um, the tattooed priestess or something she was called oh crap see that chasing now, I, now i have to play those games they were good games i wonder if that's I why i wonder if that's why you and harold like tattoos <laughs> maybe because <laughs> <laughs> psychological and uh, there's been a i've read a psychological paper a few years ago that was published because some, i read a lot of rubbish sometimes and um it was going on about <laughs> why people like horror movies and horror games so much is because it scares you and it gives you that fight or flight instinct that not a lot of people experience nowadays in the modern world. I saw a bit of that way, though. <laughs> I've always liked horror stuff, though. Yeah, I same don't know here. Why. Same here. I yeah, do, same here. I, I, I love it so much that I have I have stayed at haunted hotels and things like that. <laughs> you mentioned that the other week, didn't you? Yeah, um, it, it, it was fun. I, I, I didn't see anything. Uh, but one of my dogs started barking like around three i took my dogs with me and uh they started barking to a wall like around four in the morning actually it was like around three non-stop and they were growling i was like uh if there's a ghost there or something like that i don't care i'm really sleepy. i'm going back to sleep yeah. do you know what i'll call that <laughs> i'll call that one of the people at the house um going um on the opposite side of the wall opening a can of dog food and then you know shaking it about <laughs> Oh, don't I wouldn't be able to sleep. How did you sleep in that room? <laughs> um, in the city that I live in, apparent, um, there's a apparently a in the house here that's really haunted, and um, you can stay there. And it's like, yeah, that's a lot of rubbish because all the years that I've lived in my city, the first time I've heard about it was when it was in the paper. There's um, a hotel in our town that's apparently haunted by like a ghost bride or something. I think it is. Oh, uh, Lady in White. I can't remember. Probably. Oh, that's what but, um, uh, ghost brides are typically called, uh, Ladies in White. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually in the honeymoon suite. Perhaps I'm told. It's meant to be haunted. Haru, you stayed there, didn't you? I'm sure she said she saw something when she stayed there. 
Um, what was that? Yeah, um, I was going to put up a video that was inspired that um, this tra um, intro inspired the Resident Evil movies, but I can put that up later. So. Um, yeah, when I was a kid, me and my friends, we used to tell a lot of ghost stories, and we used to tell a ghost story about the woman in white, <laughs> the woman in red, and the woman in black. Oh, that's scary enough. You already mentioned something similar to uh, Juan, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Grudge style. Oh, she said they tried to put them in that room on their wedding night, but she made them swap their room. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, let me let me put up that trailer for. Uh, well, it's not a trailer; it's an intro. That if anybody has seen the Resident Evil Two Apocalypse movie, this is where one of those scenes is inspired from. A hey, uh, banger. Yes. I'm sorry. I just sent you a message to uh, through Discord. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Let me find it. Ah, nice. Let me get that up. No one dared to oppose in another and another one <laughs> there's two check your uh, it's all good I just have to I, I have to leave guys I apologize for that I suppose they had to suffer the consequences of their actions but there would be no forgiveness oh that's all right baited thank you for being here had the courage no my pleasure it's true that once the wheels of justice begin to turn nothing can stop them nothing It was Raccoon City's last chance, and my last chance. My last escape. This is Chopper Delta, preparing to drop off at area E95074. Oh, we did. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I just have to step. Oh, my bad. Just let me do it. Uh, I have to go to my kids. I'm sorry. I need That's to right. start making dinner and whatnot. Uh, take care, guys. Thank you so much for everything. Thanks, Peter. Uh, take care, baby. Take care, Tom Birdie. Take care, Vanguard. Have a good day, guys. Or good evening. It's already night for you guys. Take care. Yeah, just... Fight. Yeah, it was oh, um, this scene inspired the scene in the actual Resident Evil movie. All right. So, have you seen the Resident Evil movies, Aru? Uh, Aru, <laughs> that's because Aru's just put by bearded. <laughs> 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 yes, Aru. Um, welcome. Uh, thank you for being a guest, Aru. <laughs> God's sake. It doesn't help that you're twins. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, so fun, very. Have you ever seen the Res ever, um, the Resident Evil movies? I uh, I have actually. I've seen all of them. I I do like the movies. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't. It was kind of like. I wish it was more like the games. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Let me just put up this picture that B did sent me before he left. And I'll be or the um. It won't be. Yes, I think that's a picture from. Are you still here, Fun Barry? Yeah. 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 Um, it's because Bearded's not here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it seems very I'm very trying, quiet. Um, I'm trying to find a picture to show you of that um, tattoo priestess that I was talking about. Cause she was scary. Well, thank you for being a guest, Bearded. Um, have fun. Take care. I yes, G Money. Um, you've just Vanguard. Um, yes. Did you ever see the Resident Evil movies? I have. Uh, what did you think of them? I did like them, but they—I don't know. It didn't feel like Resident Evil to me. No, um, especially with um, uh, Mila Jovovich playing her character. I forgot her character's name. Alice. That's it, Alice. Alice. 
Like I did, I did, I liked the films. They were like quite good, but it was more like an an action film, wasn't it? It wasn't. Yes. Well, I didn't, I didn't really find it scary. It wasn't a horror film, was it? No. So. It. It was good, like on its own, but not as a Resident Evil film. I'm just trying to get your links from your to your YouTube, and I can't press enter, so <laughs> I have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. Let me. I'll have to sort okay. that out later. Yes, um. Resident Evil, so. Yeah, you've seen the movies. Everybody's seen the movies as they were so popular. Yeah, I did. did I did like the movies, as I was saying, but. Uh, yeah, the ad will would the CGI movies are far better because that takes part in the in-game universe other than a separate universe. Have you seen the CGI Resident Evil Skull and Buried? Um, I've seen... Oh, well, I can't even remember which one it was called. The one where they're at the airport. Oh, that's the first one. That's um, Degeneration. Resident Evil Degeneration. Yeah, I've seen that one, but I haven't seen Star. The that's got Claire Redfield there and just... Damnation with Leon S. Kennedy, and I have forgotten the other one, the third one, and that has um, Ada, not Ada, that has Rebecca Chambers. Oh, right. Are they any good? No, yeah, they're alright. They're, um, they're more involved into the game universe than a separate universe, and so I, I think they're more far superior than the live action movies. Yeah. Which, what do you think about the TV show that Netflix are developing? I haven't seen much about it, to be honest. Like, I've heard rumours about it. I'm kind of hoping it's actually going to be like Jill, hopefully. Oh, uh, you're not going to like this, what I'm going to have to tell you. The development... Oh, God, <laughs> um, Netflix is currently developing a Resident Evil TV series that is based upon the two children of Albert Wesker as they investigate what happened to their dad. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? They're turning a Resident Evil survival horror game into a teen rom-com. <laughs> Are you having a laugh? I hope so, because I've just made that up about the teen rom-com, but not about the two children about Albert Wesker investigating. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, hello, Predator Zone. We're on about Resident Evil or anything horror. So is there anything that you like to talk about, Thornberry Gaming, about any horror games or any horror movies? I'm, I found a picture. I'm going to send you it. Okay. Hang on. Um, no, no, we're not Aru. Um, yeah, Netflix are developing a Resident Evil TV series where... The main focus is on the two children of Albert Wesker as they investigate a newly rebuilt Raccoon City. And it's pissed the fans off. What, what the actual fuck? I actually can't believe that. Oh, here you go. I finally found one that's letting me save. <laughs> I can't remember what the... There's one in the second um, Project Zero as well, where it's got this woman who just... I think she like kills a load of people and she just stands in the middle of the room just laughing. And it scared the crap out of me. That one was... But, like, if you play the games, they're all different curses. Um, to me, Predator Zone. Res the first Resident Evil movie was okay. Resident Evil 2 was far better, but after... The first and second Resident Evil movie that the the movies just went downhill and they're a load of rubbish. They're very rubbish. They just went like way over the top, didn't they? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just like, what is happening? I remember everything. Um. Cause oh God. Um, because the director and creator of the Resident Evil movies is the same creator and director of the Alien vs Predator movies, the director and the writer basically took the Resident Evil 2 script, 
Frost Out, Resident Evil 2 Apocalypse, and rewrote Alien vs Predator Requiem on it, and then just crossed out Zombies with Alien, and crossed out Nemesis with um, Predator. Because if you watch um, Resident Evil Apocalypse, which is the second movie, and then, re and then watch Requiem, Res um, Alien vs Predator Requiem, they are both the same movie. It's just a bit cheeky, really, isn't it? No, it's, um, yeah, it is. So. I sent you that picture on Messenger, I'm not sure. I'm not getting any, um, notifications. Wait. Another one that I liked when I was younger, um, I think it counts as survival horror. The, um, clock tower. Oh, I, I haven't been on that. Oh, PS1. Clock Tower on PS1. I haven't been on that in years. I think it was the third one I played. Um, I think everybody's losing followers, TJ, as there's a lot of hot pots about. <laughs> yeah, that, that was quite a good game. I liked that. Um... Yeah, other than that um, Tuesday when I lost 40 followers, um, I lose one or two a day, but that's from people doing sub for sub, you know, coming onto my channel, sub um, following me, like, oh, follow me back, please, and I don't, so I'll just say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just say that on a live stream. <laughs> and, then the and then the unfollow, so that's why I don't do it. Because the unfollow straight away. Yeah, sometimes they... Literally will unfollow right after the stream's finished or something. It's just like, oh, okay. Bye then. <laughs> so, uh, we, since we, um, I think Bearded was carrying, um, I think he was carrying a podcast. <laughs> 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 he's escaped and he's left us to die. <laughs> Is it easier if I send those on Discord? They're uh, not... Yes, it, it will it will be because I can't use my freaking keyboard. I've got like two keyboards in front of me. Sorry. And I can't use I was going to say one. it's sending, but it's not like actually going through. I've got a picture of oh, the... Yes, um, I've got it. That's the tattoo priestess and the other one is from Cock Tower. Open link, save image. So this is the tattooed lady. You, is she actually called the Tattooed Lady? I think, I think she's called the Tattooed Priestess. She was like the main baddie in um, Project Zero Three. She's the one you have to fight at the end, and she she kind of follows you through the game. It's all like how Nemesis does Resident Evil Three, I guess. Oh yeah, called Fear. That that reminded me of um, Resident Evil Four. I've got that for PS Two and the Xbox. Called Fear. I don't think I've played Fear. Wasn't that like a little girl that had like powers or something? No, called Fear is basically, it's kind of like, um, let's say you put Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil Revelations together, you would get called Fear. Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, yeah, that, I was, I just, yeah, I was about to mention that my game is my adventure. So, uh, because, um, Yeah, it feels like sometimes you will see a game that was from like 20 years ago and then you'll see that same con concept within a newer game and it's kind of like, was the inspired by that game or what, did the developers who developed that game let her get a job at that studio and we used that concept? Mm. Um, Resident Evil 1, 2 and 3 would make a great video game. Uh, video game, they do make great video games, um, would make a great movie if they actually took inspiration from the movie instead of creating a separate universe. Yeah, definitely. That's what I liked about Silent Hill, though, the films. So, they yeah, they so, did actually uh, take a lot from the games, didn't they? Yes. Um, do you want to tell chat about the character that is up, um, the Tattooed Lady or the Tattooed Priestess? How do you have to defeat her? She is like the main baddie 
I think it's like you get the the tattooed, like because in all the different Project Zero games, you have the different curses. Like the first one, you you have the, I think it's called the rope curse. Like you start getting rope marks on your arms, and eventually you get them. I think you when you get it on your neck, you die. Um, the second one. I don't actually remember much about what the curse was in the second one. It was something to do with the twins. But the third one, it was like, it was a bit different because they, it would be like a dream world. It was, it's like supposed to be based in the same, like, village that the other two were based. But it's like they'd go there and then all of a sudden they'd start dreaming that they were there. And people were getting trapped in these dreams and not waking up, and eventually, like these tattoos that it's like bruises would start appearing on their bodies. And the more they dreamed of this place, the more the tattoo would spread, and eventually it spreads over their entire body, like it does on the priestess. How old and was? They would just get spirited away. How old was you and Arrow when you played this game? Um, I don't even remember. Pretty young. I think we were like in high school or something. So, as I said earlier, is this what inspired you to get some tattoos? <laughs> it might you. have been, you know. I don't even... I can't even remember when I wanted my first tattoo. Was it after playing this game? It, it probably was. <laughs> 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 I did think she was cool, but scary at the same time. Yeah, um, I've played all of the Dead Space games. Um, Will Wood, they're alright. They're pretty good. Um, it's a shame that the developers, Visceral, they got the creator of Uncharted to work for them and then they was going to create a Star Wars game, single player Star Wars game and EA closed them down because they didn't think that single player games was the way to go anymore. Hey Ninja, welcome to the stream. How are you today? Welcome to the uh, Outlying Gaming Podcast. Where, uh, today we are speaking about survival horror games, horror movies and, well, anything basically. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a film that came out that was like similar to these games. Yeah, I think I've heard a movie, um, but I haven't watched it. Um, oh. I'm trying to remember what it was called. There was one where some someone was like a photographer or something, and they were like, "Oh, I caught this ghost on the camera." I think I watched it around Harry's house, funny enough, a few years ago. <laughs> that sounds it's like scary. that sounds like the Grinch or Rukon, a bit. It, it might have been one of the Grudge films, for all I know. <laughs> so for October, will you be streaming many horror games? Or are you going to stay out of Scaretober? No, I'm definitely going to be doing it. Oh. You know me, I like horror. <laughs> uh, what type of horror games will you be streaming? I'm kind of going to do a, a bit of a mixture. Because you mentioned Resident right, um, Evil earlier, didn't you, with Haru maybe doing Resident Evil 6, but you said that you started that and then you've got, like, towards the end. I know, we started Resident Evil 5. That, that so, we're think, so we're thinking of doing 6 at some point. Um, just so we can do something together as well. No, um, Thornberry was just talking about the Fatal Frame games as, in the UK, they are known as... It's escaped my mind now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, thank you, Ninja. Thank you for dropping by. And welcome back, Haru. We have got the um, tattooed prince, um, priestess up on screen. Let me put the <laughs> other one up. Haru's like, why would you put the tattoo thing on the screen? I'm not sure what uh, what else I'm going to be playing yet. I know I'm going to be playing Ghostbusters because I wanted something a bit more. Um... <laughs> yeah, I've always been a big Ghostbuster fan. Uh, I was a kid, and I was like, I don't, wanna, I don't want to just do scary games. I want to do something a bit more. Um, I don't know, like funny, I guess, <laughs> as well. <laughs> but I've got a couple of indie games as well that are meant to be quite scary. That I haven't tried yet, so I've kind of been saving them for October as well. Let, so me, have a, let me have a see if this works.
Yeah, that is the protagonist from Clock Tower 3. I'm trying to remember. I think I only ever played the second one, or was it the first one on PS2? I can't remember. <coughs> uh, um, Ninja, um, it was last week or the week before, and I was playing Grand Theft Auto V, streaming it, and then um, it came to the two hour mark, and um, I went to close the stream, and then everybody just started talking about video games, and then people said I should do a podcast about video games. Are you still there, uh, Thornberry? Yeah. Oh, you went yeah, quite over I, I was reading the chat and I got distracted. <laughs> yeah, Clock Tower 3 was one of those ones where um, you had like the panic meter. Because you couldn't really fight anything until you got to the actual boss battle. You had to like run and hide basically and if she panicked you had you had like lavender and stuff to calm her down but if she panicked she 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 would get hit and die in one hit basically um yeah alien isolation will would um i've got a shelf full of games and i call it um my shame shelf it's that it's games that i've bought and never played <laughs> or, or completed and early and I've played half of it and then it's like oh another game has come out that I wanted to play and I've, it's just been left on the shelf you are on the shelf of shame <laughs> I tend to buy things on sale a lot and then forget that I even have them oh, I had a troll who was the troll MDA there's a troll yeah Mr. Deadhead said there was a troll Hello. So, um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying. Well, we could turn this conversation. <laughs> so let's put up some. I will put up and up some more characters of Resident Evil. Does anybody have any questions in chat concerning Resident Evil that we could touch upon? Okay, we have Jill Valentine earlier. Now let's put up a male protagonist of Resident Evil. Leon S. Kennedy, who, which is character designed, design was inspired by Leonardo DiCaprio. Was it really? Yes. Yep. I did not know that. We explained to the hair. Yeah, now it's style Leonardo DiCaprio. Leon, I love Leon. Get down, Leon. Hi, <laughs> here. Hey, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> oh, which film was it where they had Leon in it? That really annoyed me, the actor that they picked for him. Uh, oh, it's the one where they go to that under bit, the base underneath the ice ice um, shelf. In, yeah, uh, I didn't like that. Oh, and, just like, uh, and the, yeah, they go underneath the base, go to all of those areas. Nearly half, all of them die, and all they had to do was go outside and blow up a turban, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> like, if they stayed outside and just fired upon this turban, it would have been over. <laughs> it, just, it just ruined it for me. I was just like, Leon was like one of my favourite characters, and I watched the film and was like, no, you're not Leon. Leon is young and good looking. <laughs> <laughs> It's not my Leon like, because he's not attractive. <laughs> Computer version is more attractive than you. It's not good enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The nineties style computer graphics Leon was more attractive than an actor. <laughs> 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 I don't even, I, I can't even remember what he looks like in the movie. It was that un, unnoticeable. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm going to have to dig up a picture of him now. I can't even remember what the film was called. He's probably a major actor now. I've completely forgot about it because I, he didn't portray a great Leon. I don't even remember which what that one's called. Oh, fuck. What was it? I didn't like um, oh, Wentworth Miller. I didn't like his portrayal of um, Chris Redfield for some reason. No. Hey, Gaming Phoenix, welcome. We're just talking about... Um, 
Leon S. Kennedy and the actor. Ah, nice one. And I, and I, I'm a pro. Nice. I think it's the fact he's like really scrawny. And Chris is always portrayed as quite like big and muscly and everything, isn't it? It's just like. It, no. It could be that the fact that he was in Prison Escape and his character in Prison Escape was kind of like the smaller and skinnier version of the two brothers as Lincoln was, you know, the more muscular, muscular, muscular and taller and then so you expected Chris to be that type yeah. of actor or the actor to be like that. I don't know. I just felt like <laughs> some, with some of the casting in the films, I don't know, it's just like they didn't put much effort to... Oh, oh, what was her name? No, Ali Carter played Claire Redfield, who was in a good horror movie called um, House on Haunted Hill. Was it House on Haunted Hill? Yeah, I think that's the one she was in. She's Wed. also in... Um... Wed was in The Asylum. Yes. And it has Marilyn Manson's um, Sweet Dreams. Yeah, that is yeah, House yeah. on Haunted Hill. Yeah, that's That it. was a good film. Oh crap, what was it called? Final Destination. I think. Was she in the first Oh, with Tony Todd. Yeah, I always just put it up. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I think she was in the first one and the second one, actually. With, uh, yeah, with Tony Todd, a great actor in horror movies. A very distinct voice, so he can portray a great villain. And also a good protagonist as well. Especially in the Candyman, well, the first and the second Candyman, which are the first and the second Candyman movies, are the best ones. And um, Definitely. It's, it's a shame that they're remaking the Candyman movies or rebranding re them, and they've got no Tony Todd in them, as he's the most iconic villain of that series. I know. I was gutted when they said they were doing that. It was just like, no, you're not allowed to touch those films, okay? <laughs> um. I downloaded um, on Sky. I downloaded all the Friday the Thirteenth films apart from two because they don't have them on Sky, and that is the first Friday the Thirteenth and Friday the Thirteenth Part Five. And it's like you have every single one of them apart from those two, the first and the middle one. It's like you twats, <laughs> crappy design. You're missing the middle film and the first film. Oh, now I feel bad after looking up the actor. <laughs> he's a popular actor now, isn't he? I don't know, but it, he actually, he's, he's not bad looking. He just must not have suited that fucking hairstyle or something. <laughs> ah, I'll have to read that after the podcast because Beaded Gamer has just sent me an article concerning development problems on the PS5 for Resident Evil 8. Oh. Yeah, here we go. I found it. You're not me on. So yeah, um, um, everybody in chat. What was their favorite Resident Evil game, Silent Hill game, and who was their favorite character in both of those series? <coughs> I like the first Friday the Thirteenth that created the franchise because I I'm a big fan of Legacy. Of, you know the legacy of that like, either the legacy that the game brought to the community or the legacy of that like, movie or that like, book yeah uh, number three is is i'll have to say is a great movie as well as that brings a lot of lore to these series as well And um, is anybody going to be, is everybody, is anybody in chat going to be streaming or doing recordings for YouTube on horror games during October? Well, let me open that link. Yep. I've just got it right here. Save image. Are you still here, Thornberry? Yeah, I'm just reading the comments. 
I go off into my own little world sometimes. So I'm just like, oh, la di da. <laughs> I tend to just um, trail off. Did you ever play um, the Dino Crisis games? Yeah, I've, I've still got them for the PS1. Yeah, this is the actor who portrayed Leon S. Kennedy in... Let me get the actual title of that. I think it was, like, the final chapter or something. Resident Evil. It is <clears throat> once it loads up. Resident Evil Retribution, which is inspired by one of the Resident Evil no um, novels, actually, because oh, really? that kind of setup is kind of like what um, Capcom got a writer to do some books about the Resident Evil and. That movie is kind of like inspired by one of the books. I did not know that. Played them before, but not streamed them yet. Ah, uh, yeah, Resident Evil One and Two are the best ones, Zaru and. Yeah, I'm planning as soon as it's October 1st, I'm going to be streaming Code Veronica again. And I think I might be doing some Silent Hill. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, yes, that would be great. Oh, cool. What one are you going to play? Uh, can you say that again? Come on, Barry, as you cut out a second. What one are you planning on playing? The PlayStation 1 version first. And I don't know if I should connect up my PS2 to my PC and stream the PS2 versions as well, but the quality won't be that good as they are very old games. So it's coming up to um, the two hour mark. Um, I'll be ending the stream soon. So is there anything you would like to talk about, Thornberry, before we finish the stream? I think if there's any other. Ah, yeah. um, if if I found Downpour for Xbox 360, you can play that on the Xbox One, and I can connect that up to my capture card, and stream that. But for that's me, Silent Hill Downpour is the worst ever, ever um, Silent Hill game because that's where it killed the front the series. See, I did like Downpour, but yeah, it was another one of those ones where it was just like. The whole feel of the game was different. Like I mentioned earlier, um, as soon as technology started to get better, the survival horror series started to get a lot worse because the survival horror element relied upon gimmicks to frighten people, and as soon as you got better graphics, you couldn't rely on those gimmicks anymore. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the time, though, nowadays, too many people concentrate on getting really good graphics and don't necessarily concentrate on the gameplay and the story because sometimes some of the like some of the best games i've played are like stuff of like nintendo kind of graphics you know what i mean this is one of my best um Retro games that I like to play. I know it's not horror, but I've got it as a picture. Since uh, it is a gaming podcast, so we can talk about any games. We just somehow wanted to talk about Resident Evil and Survival Horror today. Yes, the most fun SNES game ever released was Mario World. I love to play that game, still do, after 20, 20 years, or oh, is it longer? 
26 years, 20, 26, I believe. I, yeah. It's been up, it's been out for so long. I forgot when it was out. <laughs> a long time. No, it's a shame about your PS3 dying. Because, uh, yes. because if you're able to get a capture card, you'd be able to connect to P the PS3 up to the capture card and play PS1 games and stream them from the really? PS3. Yes. So. Yeah, my PS3 died a while ago, which is annoying because I had all the Silent Hill collection, Resident Evil collection, everything on that. Let's change the actor footage as that was the actor who portrayed Leon S. Kennedy. And this is Chris Redfield. Oh, Chris Red Redfield is smoking. Chris Redfield. Yep. Did you ever play um like Resident Evil Survivor? Uh, yes, or any of them ones? Um, yeah, I uh, I played Resident Evil Survivor. I didn't like it that much. I did it, but even back then, I didn't really like it. But yeah, um, Operation Raccoon City. I didn't quite like that one either, and I didn't like Umbrella Core. I only went on it. For... So Resident the Resident Evil Survivor was one of those ones where the actor was so terrible, it was just funny. <laughs> they need to remake the Outbreak series of Resident Evil, as that is the actual online mode most people want, is the Outbreak. Hey, VT Ardra, welcome, as we talk about survival horror games. Oh, bye, Willwood. Thanks for coming. So. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. Okay, bye, Willwood. Um, have a nice evening as well, as I'm about to end the stream also. Um, yeah. Thank you, Thornberry, for taking part in this um, very amateur-style podcast. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you, Beaded for dropping by as well. Um, thank you everybody in chat. Let me just go down the list of names. Thanking everybody, so yeah, thank you J Gamer, Kelly Barkus, The Smoke, Chilled Moon, Beaded Gamer, r, &R Games, Galactic Empire Gaming, Thornberry Gaming, Wesley Mills, r, &R Gaming, G Money, Tommy Jarvis, Danny Ruiz, From Within Gaming, Key Plays, Interval, Sabbath for Blood, Queen Mercury, TJ, Hits the Killer 696, Bear Logan, Electronizer, Goku, Breakout Media, Never Pro, Wilson, Cuptrick, Andrew Dreams, Dredzen, NCM, Tiffany S. Love, Elite, Elite Series Games, My Games, My Adventure, Abu Lockhart, Predator Zone, Ninja Soldier, Doom and Chaos, Mr. Deadhead, Gaming for Mix, and VT Hydra Gaming. Thank you for dropping by. Is there, anybody, is there anything you'd like to say, Thornberry, before we finish? No, just thanks for inviting me along. That's alright. Um, I'll have to have a, a talk about the podcast with you and Beardy uh, to see if you two would like to continue with the podcast. <clears throat> okay, cool. You know, um, not, not not every day or every week, something like once every two weeks, but we can go into that after the, pod, um, after the stream. Yeah, thank you everybody for dropping by. Um, enjoy your morning, your afternoon, your evening, take care, stay safe, and have fun playing those games. <laughs>